Hi everybody, welcome to our Summer Reading Club Creative Writing Workshop with me, Miss Charlotte. So for this week's creative writing lesson, I wanted to talk to you all about using personification and point of view by writing about objects. So as some of you have probably learned in school, personification in writing is when you take an animal, an object, um, an idea or emotion, and you bring it to life by giving it human traits and personalities and human attributes. So for an idea or an object or um, an emotion, you would bring it to life by giving it our five senses we've been talking about, right? And personality. So letting it think about things, um, get up and walk around, or do jumping jacks. <laughs> um, and for animals, since you know animals do have those five senses and talk to each other in their way, you would personify them by giving them human attributes. So things that only humans do, like wear clothes or go to the grocery store, or fly kites or <laughs> something like that like the three little bears, right? That's personification. Um, and another really great way to use personification, a good reason why to use it in your writing, is that it can help make sense of things or explain things that are sometimes hard to explain. And it's explaining something in a way that readers can really relate to and understand or picture. So um, one example of that kind of personification maybe some of you have seen or at least heard of the movie Inside Out. That movie is about a girl who has these little emotions. They're like little people or creatures. Um, and then some of the movie takes place inside her head so you can see her emotions. And they have the kind of personalities of those emotions. And it's a really good way to explain all those feelings and emotions living inside you and how that can mess with your personality or how your environment can um, affect those emotions and it's a really easy way to explain it. Um, we actually have a similar picture book here called When Sadness is at Your Door and um, sadness is just like a little sad blob <laughs> but it's a really lovely book that explains um, how sadness works by personifying it and giving it like a kind of sleepy gloomy personality right so um, I wanted to share a poem with you that is personification about poetry <laughs> so this is a really great example of um, writing personification that kind of explains something visually in a way that may be harder to explain otherwise Okay, so this is by Mary Oliver. It's called That Little Beast. That pretty little beast, a poem, has a mind of its own. Sometimes I want it to carve apples, but it wants red meat. Sometimes I want to walk peacefully on the shore, and it wants to take off all its clothes and dive in. Sometimes I want to use small words and make them important and it starts shouting in the dictionary the opportunities. Sometimes I want to sum up and give thanks, putting things in order, and it starts dancing around the room on its four furry legs, laughing and calling me outrageous. But sometimes, when I'm thinking about you and no doubt smiling, it sits down quietly, one paw under its chin, and just listens. So I love that poem. I think it's really beautiful and um, it's a really great example of personification because it's, you know, it's not really about an animal we know, but it's about this little beast that because she uses so many great descriptions and um, personality traits, we can really kind of get a sense of who this beast is <laughs> with the um, one paw under its chin it's four furry legs, laughing. So you can kind of hear in that personification of the beast and that it's personifying this poem and that sometimes it's 
hard to sit down and write the idea you have in your head. Um, and that can be kind of hard to explain to people who don't practice creative writing or try to write sometimes, right? Um, if you only read those lovely, beautiful, finished products, you might not understand how hard it can be to sit down and just try to get your idea on the page. Sometimes, like how Mary Oliver illustrates here, the poem or idea kind of argues with you. <laughs> But I love too how it sort of ends on this happy, hopeful note that um, sometimes when I'm thinking about you and no doubt smiling, it sits down quietly and just listens. And that kind of last stanza speaks to how sometimes the idea really does come after practice and maybe writing and rewriting, right? So it's kind of about that too. We've talked a little bit about how it's not perfect the first time. You have to practice and write, rewrite, scribble out, erase, take a break and come back later. <laughs> and then sometimes you'll just have that little moment of an epiphany. So um, I have a couple other poems by former students to share with you that are also about poems that are personified and they explain how difficult it can be to write poetry sometimes. Okay, this one is called That Mystery Creature, A Poem. That mystery creature, a poem. It loves the dark so it can hide. I want it to show its face, but it likes to keep its mask to hide its face from reality. Sometimes I wish the creature wouldn't fly, but it soars away with its huge, dark, feathery wings before returning peacefully to Earth. Sometimes I want it to clean its sharp teeth and trim its long, sharp, pointy nails and wide, dark horns, but it stares with its bright yellow snake eyes and smiles before taking off into the starry night. You can hear its dark laugh for miles. <laughs> I love that poem because it does a really great job of using those senses and descriptions and really kind of gives us the feeling that this is a dark creature and um, it also has a personality right this creature and poem is really shy and sometimes likes to hide even though this writer or narrator wants to express herself it come so this one is kind of about how it can be hard to be vulnerable in your writing sometimes and go to those dark or scary places um, and so that was really lovely personified by this mystery creature, this kind of mysterious writing. Okay, so one more personified poems about poems. <laughs> this one is called That Sneaky Snake. That sneaky snake, a poem, such a dangerous creature with demon horns and a crooked smile, that sneaky snake won't let me be. It sometimes bites when I want it to smile. It sometimes screams when I want it to speak. Its foul breath and worn clothes make it worse. Its misplaced teeth and slim eyes make it rough. It yells and hisses at people when it only needs to say please. It can be good, it can be sweet, but that sneaky snake will never be what I want it to be. <laughs> So I love that poem too. It really describes that kind of frustration when you can't get your idea down on the page, right? And the sneaky snake really kind of lends itself to that. So um, depending on what you are wanting to write about, some kind of idea or object, giving it um, kind of animal, animalistic personality traits are a good way to sort of bring it to life and show um, or let the reader know what you're trying to say about your object or your idea. In this case, it's about writing. Um, and I love these lines too that say, it yells and hisses at people when it only needs to say please, or it sometimes screams when I want it to speak. So I feel like that's kind of about how sometimes in writing it, we can like over explain things, but really sometimes all we need to do is use these fun little tricks we've been talking about, right? Like our senses and um, 
or personification, good descriptions. All right, so, and you can do that with not just poetry or ideas, right? You can personify any kind of objects, and we'll talk about that a little bit more. So, um, up next, in talking about personification, I wanted to talk a little bit about point of view as well. So, it's a really fun way to um, use for personification, taking an object or an animal and writing from that object or animal's point of view. So, we did this in one of my classes with objects and a really fun game you can try if you have someone at home with you or a friend or you can just even do it over instant messaging, however you do instant messaging, um, is to pick an object in your room or something that you both know of, right? And write a little poem about it from its point of view. And the trick is not to give away what the object is. So you would just try to describe it well enough that um, the reader or listener, however you're doing it, would be able to guess the object in question. So um, one writer, a student, did that in a class. Well, I'll read you his without giving the title and you'll probably be able to guess what the object is. I make things appear. I make things disappear. I'm skinny because I like to tango across blank pages. I have 12 brothers and sisters. I come in different colors. When I'm used, there's a firm grip on me. Do you have a guess? <laughs> that was a poem about a pencil or a colored pencil. So I love the the lines, um, I'm skinny because I like to tango across blank pages and I make things appear and I make things disappear, right? So just appear with a pencil, disappear with the eraser. <laughs> so um, a really fun way to, like I said, use personification is to write from your object's point of view. So, and that's another way to really bring in those five senses we've been talking about in writing, right? Is to think about, you know, what would the object smell or taste if it was tasting anything? What would it hear? So um, I have a really great poem to share with you by one of my favorite poets ever named Sylvia Plath. And this is personification, it's about an object, and it's also a poem told from the object's point of view. Okay, so this is called Mirror. I am silver and exact. I have no preconceptions. Whatever you see, I swallow immediately, just as it is, unmisted by love or dislike. I am not cruel, only truthful. The eye of a little god four cornered. Most of the time I meditate on the opposite wall. It is pink with speckles. I have looked at it so long I think it is a part of my heart but it flickers. Faces and darkness separate us over and over. Wow. <laughs> so Sylvia Plath was a master and you might think it's really hard to give a mirror a personality or a life, right? But um, she was really creative in that imagining a mirror, and I guess this was a specific mirror, that it sees like a pink wall, and that when the lights turn off, it just sees darkness, the lights turn on, and someone's in front of it, so it sees spaces. And um, I think it's really fun to do these personification and point of view poems because they're really creative in that they sort of blend fiction and nonfiction. So the fiction of it is that you're giving an object life and personality, right? And that's obviously imaginary, but there's truth to it in that, yes, a mirror looks at the opposite end of the room. 
for a pencil um, writes across pages and makes things appear and disappear. So there's truth to these and that's why it is a really good tool to explain something complex or something um, imaginative in a way that humans, that readers can really understand. And um, object poems can be fun too if you're writing about something maybe in your own house or a specific object people know about because um, you can make them more personal. Like um, if you're writing from something in your bedroom, their point of view, like they know maybe your um, stuffed animal, right, like knows something about you and you can sort of tell your story from a teddy bear's perspective. Um, and like, how would they see you? How would they hear things that go on in your house or your family? It could be a really fun thing to imagine, kind of like Toy Story, right? Or um, the secret life of pets. Those are ways you can kind of make them more personal, closer to home. So um, I have one more object poem to share with you that um, I'm sure we could all relate to, even if some of y'all don't have phones yet. <laughs> so this is another poem that is a personification and it's told from the point of view of a phone. <laughs> so it's called Phone on the Nightstand. Every morning when I open my eyes, I see a nose in my face. I'm always being touched, even when I try to play dead. <laughs> all this girl does is scroll, tap, and watch all day long. I just wish she would put me down for at least a minute or two. I just want time to myself to relax and do my own thing. Just think of all the fun I could have, or rather, the mischief I could get into. <laughs> I love that one so much. I think it's really fun to imagine what your phone is thinking about you while we scroll, hopefully not all day, right? Um, so this week, my um, prompt or challenge for you all is to pick an object, something maybe that's in your own house or something that's important to you and try to write, um, and it doesn't have to be a poem, right? Poems are just really easy to read to you all. Um, write a poem or a story or just a short little paragraph about um, your object's point of view or how they see things. How they, what do they think about? What do they hear? Um, what kind of personality do they have? So maybe some of you have pets at home that you'd like to write about and imagine what they think about you and your family or where you live. Um, or maybe you would like to write about um, some kind of emotion or an object you have that's really special to you. So um, a couple of prompts or another prompt to write a poem like that mystery creature, a poem, something easy to do with that is to take the first line of the poem and you could either write about writing like that poem. So you would just say that little beast, a poem, and then kind of write from there. You could use the same kind of formula where they say, sometimes I want it to blank, but it does blank. What does it do? How does it kind of fight with you? Um, and it doesn't have to be about poetry, right? Some, maybe you could write something like that lazy sloth, my homework <laughs> or my book report or um, what else do I have here? That clumsy camel, my chores <laughs> or something maybe that you want to talk about doing that you don't like to do or that you love to do. Um, what's something that you have in mind that you could personify and giving it some kind of like animal traits and personality is a really good way to explain that. Or maybe you'd rather do something like an emotion um, and you don't have to use that little formula. You could just 
you know, free write and answer maybe some of those questions. Like, um, if love were a person, like, what would they look like? What would they smell and hear? Like, what kind of personality would they have? Um, okay. So I guess that's it. I wanted to just go over my notes and make sure I didn't have one more thing to read to y'all. But I think that's it for today. So um, I would love to hear from you all if you're out there writing about objects or um, emotions or animals, your pets. If you'd like to share, you can always um, join our Facebook group and post in there or even just message me if any of y'all are writing something you'd like feedback on. Um, or even if you're just here listening and hearing some poetry, I'm so glad that you're here. I've been having a lot of fun sharing these tips and strategies with you all. So um, I'll see you next time. And uh, give me a shout if there's any requests you'd like to make or questions you have about writing. And I'd love to be as helpful as I can for you all. So I hope you all have a fun day and a happy summer. <laughs> Bye, y'all.